Okay, so when it comes to really assessing anything from a Jewish perspective, any topic that we want to understand according to Judaism, we need to first identify what the issues and the concerns are. Any particular topic will have a number of potential issues and concerns, and then we have to be able to analyze each of these potential concerns to evaluate the general issue. So when it comes to looking at the general topic of recreational drug use, there are a number of potential concerns that arise, and I'd like to basically share those with you tonight. <coughs> First of all, I guess one of the simplest things to take care of, get it out of the way, is that the Talmud mentions a number of times the concept of Dina de Malchusa Dina, which means the law of the land is the law. So if we're living in a city or in a municipality, a state, a country, where a drug like marijuana is against the law, it would be a problem according to Judaism as well. Now one of the more serious concerns when it comes to consuming anything according to Judaism are potential health concerns. This becomes an overarching uh, template that really applies to anything that we consume, anything that we do, right? From bungee jumping to uh, jumping out of a plane. We have to ask the question from a Jewish point of view, how does it affect our health? The Torah says in the book of Devarim, chapter 4, verse 15, that we have to be extremely careful about our souls. Now, in context, that chapter is dealing with our spiritual health, but our sages took that to mean, as well, our physical health. We have to be extremely careful about maintaining our, our physical health. Anything that would endanger or cause any harm to ourselves and our health is a serious problem. According to the Torah, we cannot damage ourselves or cause, cause any harm to ourselves in any way whatsoever. The Torah takes this so seriously that the Talmud teaches in Tractate Chulin 10a, Hamura Sakanta Medi Isura, which means that we have to be more careful about whether something is potentially dangerous than even whether it's kosher or not kosher. So for example, when you're going to the supermarket to buy food and you check to see if the ingredients are kosher, what the Talmud is saying, you have to be even more careful to make sure that none of the ingredients is potentially harmful. So if you're concerned about the kashrus, whether it's ritually kosher, the Talmud is saying even stricter we have to be when it comes to whether the, the, the thing we're going to consume is potentially harmful to us. And so with that template in mind, we have to ask the question, are there any potential health risks, either physical or psychological, when it comes to recreational drugs? That becomes an extremely serious concern. And if there are any risks or potential risks, not just actual risks, even if it's potentially harmful, the Torah would not condone its use. The Torah also teaches us in the book of Vayikra, Leviticus chapter 19, 14, Lifnei Iver before the blind do not place a stumbling block. Now, to me, what this would teach us in terms of how it's related to the topic at hand is there may be things about the use of recreational drugs that are not necessarily health risks or health problems but there can be secondary issues that come as a result of recreational drugs. For example, becoming dependent or addicted to a substance, even if it's not unhealthy to us physically or psychologically, just being dependent and addicted to something has its own series of concerns, our own, its own series of problems. Another problem, another issue is that some seemingly innocuous substances can become gateway drugs leading to more dangerous ones. 
So even if we were to identify a recreational drug that seems to be fairly harmless, again, I'm not resolving the issue here, I'm raising the issue. Is it possible that it could lead to indulging in other drugs that can be more dangerous? And then a third issue, which is not totally remote, is that if we become dependent and addicted to certain substances, could that lead to potential criminal activity in order to support or maintain our habit? So those are all potential fallouts from engaging in recreational drug use. I would say they would fall into the category of before the blind don't put a stumbling block. Now, Rav Moshe Feinstein, who was the greatest halachic authority, greatest authority on Jewish law at the end, the second half of the 20th century, he wrote a famous response, a famous argument, really uh, listing about a half a dozen problems with the use of recreational drugs. And he says that one of the problems is that the craving and dependence that can be brought on by drug use is similar, he says, to what the Bible describes in the Ben Sora Umora, the rebellious son in Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 18, who develops a continuous desire for gluttonous eating. I'm not sure that Rav Moshe was referring to the munchies that are brought on when you overindulge in pot, but certainly he compares the person who is becomes essentially addicted to their drug of choice, and it's similar to the rebellious son in the Bible who just has this continuous desire to stuff himself with food. And Rav Moshe says that at least food is a legitimate and important need of the body, whereas consuming drugs, you cannot make that excuse, cannot give that as a parallel. Another issue is that our sages in a number, number of places in our literature have condemned drunkenness in general. For example, the Talmud teaches in Brachos 31b that if a person is drunk, they're not allowed to pray. They're not allowed to pray. And the truth is that we know that when people get high or drunk, they lose their inhibitions and they lower their guard against all kinds of other immoral behaviors. So just the state of drunkenness or being high is not necessarily an optimal state to be living a spiritual life. One of the teachings of the Kutzker Rebbe that I love to quote, the Kutzker would always say that I don't avoid sin so much because it's wrong. He said I avoid it because there isn't time. Meaning that we have a limited amount of time in life. And the truth is that people who get high, for them that often becomes an activity. I remember hearing once a woman from Israel was explaining to her friends in Israel, what is it like living in the United States? So she said to her friends in Israel, you know what the United States is like? And everyone was listening and she said, shopping, 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 shopping. I mean, in other countries, you go shopping when you need stuff. You have to buy some food, you need clothing. But here in North America, shopping becomes an activity. We, we go to the mall. As teenagers, we hang out at the mall. That's a use of our time that the Kutzker would say could be put to use better doing other things, growing spiritually, learning, improving ourselves, working on our character traits. And so for people who get involved with using drugs, it's usually an activity, and it's an activity that's done regularly, and that can be seen certainly as a waste of time. Another problem, which often happens with younger people, is that drugs basically kills off motivation and drive in life. It's very easy to just live a life of being chilled and being high. And when a person is high all the time, they essentially lose their drive and motivation to accomplish things in life. And what turns out is that they often find themselves years later having looking back on their lives and having wasted many, many precious years of their lives that could have been put to use much more productively. Now, Rav Moshe Feinstein mentions, and this is really a peripheral issue, that if you're talking about drug use by a younger person that's still living in a home with their parents and their parents are bothered by the use of drugs, 
That runs into the problem of kibbutz avem. They're supposed to respect and honor their mother and father. So doing something which really annoys and bothers their parents would put them in violation of this biblical commandment. Rav Moshe Feinstein also felt that using drugs can violate the biblical commandment of Kedoshim Tihiyu, that you shall be holy, which is found in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 2. Nachmanides writes, in understanding this commandment, that we're supposed to strive in our lives for spiritual wholeness, even when it's beyond the letter of the law. So Nachmanides says that the Bible has laws of keeping kosher. If you want to eat food, you have to eat kosher food. But the Bible doesn't overtly, explicitly teach anything about overindulging in kosher food, becoming a glutton. And so the Ramban, Nachmanini says that if you live a life where you're seeking and indulging in excess pleasures, that's a violation of this commandment of being holy. Person who lives a life seeking to get high is often self-focused and self-absorbed and it takes their focus away from really being concerned about other people in many cases and of spending time helping other people. We live in a world today where even here in Toronto, where life is good, there are so many people that need our help. And if we get very, very busy making ourselves feel good and self-medicating and getting high, it takes away from our time and focus and energy in helping others. One last concern I will share is that Judaism is, Judaism is very focused on living productive lives. And all of us would like to live lives of having inner peace, feeling good about ourselves, and even reaching states of ecstasy. But it seems to me that according to the Torah, to reach those states of inner peace and happiness and joy artificially by using chemicals, taking that shortcut, is really a form of escapism from what should be a life of engaging our challenges in life. We were put in this world in order to face our challenges, to grow from them. And so to escape those problems and to seek inner peace by uh, having it chemically induced rather than by growing through our own efforts would seem to be uh, escaping what should be our real challenges in life. Now, if I could play Tevya from Fiddler on the Roof for a moment, he would say, but on the other hand, what if we're living in a place where, let's say, marijuana is legalized, which is probably going to be the case here in Toronto very soon? That would obviate the problem of violating local law. And what if our use of something like marijuana was not regularly, it wasn't a habit, it wasn't a crutch, but it was used on special occasions, special social occasions. Jews are supposed to get high on Purim, and traditionally we did that through alcohol. But what about using a legal substance, if it's legal like marijuana, at occasions like that, occasionally? Would it be considered then, in our society today, Jews, for example, might share a l'chaim on Shabbos, so would it be okay to use something like marijuana in situations like that? I'll leave that as an open question, and uh, I think there's a lot of room to explore.